Lord asked me to tell about this dream I had last night. Well, I mean, it would have been a nightmare. Even after I had the dream, I said to the Lord, that was a nightmare, but I don't feel I've had a nightmare. And he says, I know, I don't want to give you nightmares, but this is reality. And he showed me um, the world the way it really is. You know, people are going about their daily business. And he showed me, but well, he showed me that like the way we see the world today is people are going about their daily business but the way he showed me the world was the way it really was because we can only see the top it was like when you look at a cake you only see the icing you don't know what's underneath and he showed me exactly what's underneath and it is absolutely disgusting it's just a horror terror story and um, the most thing I remember about the dream was there was these young lawyers um, I think they were lawyers, like they looked like Yale graduates or something and they were going up some stairs through all the horror like and they were all dressed in suits all nice and through the horror there was like just children being murdered and like it was so disgusting I can't explain to you um, and they were going up the stairs and as they were going up the stairs they were saying um, should we care about what's going on down there and I shouted in my dream why don't you make more lawyers i don't know maybe they weren't lawyers or something why don't you make more lawyers to deal with the crime and um they started laughing as a group as if they'd all been brainwashed in the same way saying Haha, more lawyers like is that this is the way we want it we're doing this because we want it like this we want people to die and then another part of the dream was um showing me that some family members um, are they may have appeared to you in the past or now as being nice, buying you presents, being kind, and you know, but they are completely and utterly evil, and they want to bring you into their life so you're dependent on them, so they can drop you and actually really hurt you. Um, and then the Lord asked me to read the scripture in Isaiah 53, verse 10 says yet it was the Lord's will to crush him and cause him to suffer and though the Lord makes his life a guilt offering he will see his offspring and prolong his days and the will of the Lord will prosper in his hand after the suffering of his soul he will see the light of life and be satisfied by his knowledge my righteous servant will justify many and he will bear their iniquities and what I take from that scripture is, I know that the Lord did tell me anyway, will you work for me when I was about 20? He said, will you do something for me? And I said, anything, just don't hurt my children. And then I was doing things for him. And then he said, if, if you do lose your children, would you not love me anymore? I said, of course I would love you. They're your children. You gave me them. He said, so even if something bad happened to your children, you would still love me? I said, yes, I would. And it was the hardest thing I've ever had to say. But I did say it, and I meant it, you know, because God, they are his children, you know. They only came out of my womb. I didn't make me, and I didn't make them. So, and, um, so what I take from it is that, um, and then that I think the Lord showed me all the terrible things that are going on over all the like years. That's why He was showing me all these horrible things to be able to let people know now before the whole world actually just goes and kills them. You know, to warn them that it, you know there is no unity in the devil. The devil hates all his own people. He doesn't like people. He, you know, he all he wants is to hear screams of people in hell. So, um. And it says he will see his offspring and prolong his days. And I have seen my offspring, even though they were all taken away from me. And I've seen them in heaven and I've seen them on earth. And they've got the biggest smiles ever and the biggest power ever. So I'm so happy. And it says the will of the Lord will prosper in his hands. So whatever the Lord is telling me to do, it's been, it is prospering. And it says, after the suffering of my soul, I'll see the light of life and be satisfied. And, and I did say about maybe a year ago I woke up one day and I just said I see the light of life I see the light of life and the light of life is that God is in control he who has ears let him hear um, and it says by his knowledge my righteous servant will justify many and I think that's teaching me that when I went to confess my sins what I thought I'd done the unforgivable sins 
and the Lord forgave me. He showed me that so many people think that they can't come near him. Murderers and, you know, like people who have done terrible things think they can't come near him. But he's saying, you're forced into so many things in this world. 99.9 .9 things you're forced into by the devil. And without his influence, we wouldn't be doing them. You know, and his brainwashing. So it shows that, you know, by the knowledge that I've been given of this, I'm justifying many, which means just if they've never sinned. And, um, you know, and it's just such a lovely sketcher. Um, but reality is, don't forget that we're in a horror story, so we have to be completely separate, as separate as black and white, you know. And Isaiah 16, 4, the Lord says, Lift up your eyes and look about you, all assemble and come to you. Your sons come from afar and your daughters are carried on the arm. So, <laughs> after read Isaiah 51 and 11. The ransomed of the Lord will return. They will enter Zion with singing. Everlasting joy will crown their heads. Gladness and joy will overtake them. Mm -hmm. And sorrow and sighing will flee away. Hallelujah.